have an operation in mind that will benefit both Israel, the UK, and France. You need the Egyptians to let your training ships to the Strait of Tehran again, and we need to regain control of the Suez Canal and overthrow the Nisa regime. So, if you invade, we will come to your assistance. It is called the Protocol of Sudbury. Well, as long as the West does not blame Israel for the attack, and the UN does not label us as the worst country in the world for human rights violations, then Israel is offered the attack. Great. Let's drop a plan on how to save Israel and neutralize Egypt. We will invade the Sinai Peninsula while you shell a canal. Yes, let's lure them out and make sure Nasser can never threaten Israel from mostly our precious canal ever again. The British held the crap out of the Suez Canal destroyed our warship! We blocked the journey and cut off Western access to the Suez Canal. You know- The canal belongs to Egypt and it's essential to our economic prosperity! You shut up! Guys, guys you please calm down. Thank you very much. Okay, now, the US are the ones with the nukes. Am I right? Am I right? Yes, you're right. Now who else has nukes? Russia! Correct. Now, I'd love it if we could not go to war with Russia and start World War III. I think that'd benefit all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Alright, so now you will listen to me, okay? You, UK, France, you will withdraw from the Sinai Peninsula and leave the poor Egyptians alone. I know they hurt you before, but get over it. Russia, can you agree on this? Yes? Good. Peace. Thank you again for deciding to help us against those crazy commies. We were getting scared. No problem, senor. The U.S. is glad to help anyone who hates communism, but we do want one request. Anything for our American brothers. Thank you. The U.S. would like to place 15 nuclear warheads in Turkey to be used as a deterrent against Soviet aggression in the region. Of course, we'd love to help the U.S. while keeping ourselves safe. Spectacular. I hope this is the start of a strong Turkish-American alliance. Hey, did you hear crazy American putting nukes in Turkey? Of course, comrade. It will certainly result in nuclear war. Yeah, I wouldn't mind hearing this crap anyways. Don't talk about Madaraja like that! You don't watch it, you'll end up in Siberian Gulag! Oh, good Lenin. I wouldn't want to end up in a Gulag. Those are terrifying. Yes, comrade Strickland's Gulags are the worst. They make you watch American football and listen to Star Spackle Battle. Yeah. Football. <laughs> 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 Ah, this one guy really hits his butt. Nazdrovia, comrade! Sir, it's just as we expected. The Egyptians are mobilizing for an attack on Israel. Not again! We need to attack immediately! A preemptive strike in their airfields here and here will make sure they can't build up their forces any further. What about Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, Iraq? They'll certainly join Egypt in the fight. You're right, but it's either that or we're wiped from existence. They've been after us since 1948. This isn't the first time and it certainly won't be the last. <coughs> Besides, it'll be over in a week. A week? Never mind. Now go tell your men we're moving out. Uh, yes, sir. As Egypt built up its military capabilities, the Israelis approached the Americans for weapons and diplomatic assistance prior to the Six-Day War. U.S. military aid to Israel had been negligible, but in 1963, the Americans approved the transfer of Hawks surface-to-air missiles to Israel and recommitted to Israel's security and the need to remain, maintain a regional balance of power. By 1965, the United States cut its economic assistance to Egypt pushing the Egyptians closer to the Soviets. The Soviets exploited the Arab-Israeli conflict and American imperialism to promote pro-Soviet Arab unity, turning the region into an arena for a proxy power struggle between the USSR and the Americans. After the war, which was over in less than a week, Israel conquered Sinai, the Golan Heights in Syria, and the remainder of Palestine. Mazel 
Nice. Sir, did you ask for me? Oh, Director, yes. Is it true? Have the Soviets invaded Afghanistan? Yes, sir. They need to get the puck out. Director, I know it's hockey season, but can we please be serious? I apologize, President Carter, but I believe it is in the best interest of the U.S. to fund a group of freedom fighters in Afghanistan to fight the Soviets and ensure long-term stability in the region. It's a foolproof plan! It, nothing will go wrong, dude, and it totally won't end with the U.S. being run by a neo-fascist Oompa Loompa. What? Fund the Mujahideen? Well, as long as they're anti-communist, anti I don't see a problem with it. Okay, sir. I'll tell their leader ASAP and give the order to the U.S. government to begin funding them. Good, sir. You have a deal. We will fight the communists with your funding. Good, now don't puck it up. Puck it up? Never mind. This is a desert, dude. Here, use this gun to bring the evils of communism to its knees. The Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan in December 1979 in support of the Afghan communist government in its conflict with anti-communist Muslim guerrillas and would remain in Afghanistan until 1989. Seeing communism continuing to spread, the U.S. funded the Mujahideen and gave them arms and supplies to fight the Soviets. The Mujahideen succeeded in repelling the USSR and established the Islamic State of Afghanistan. However, soon after, the Taliban would seize control of the weak government. You have a deal. <laughs> <laughs> Who likes on the verse? They give me <laughs> time makes <it> terrible. <laughs> I'm stuck to it. Ow, my back. I'm capsizing on it.